plus size, petite, tall, curvy, underweight, overweight, fat, skinny. Why are we often so eager, especially in Asia, to tell someone that how they look like? Like you know, during Chinese New Year, where you visit your relatives and friends, and the first thing that they tell you is, oh my gosh, you've grown so much weight. Oh, how come you're so skinny? How come you lost so much weight? And they like to add that it's because they care. Is body shaming or putting a label the only thing that we can start a conversation with? Why don't we hear people usually saying, I love that confidence that you have. It seems more often than not that we hear people talk about a body size or try to put a label on it when you don't belong to the mainstream size. No wonder as a society, we are obsessed with size. And how can we begin to love ourselves? For example, I know in a certain each Asian country that if your inner thighs touch, it means you're fat. And when I walk into a room, it's not because I want people to remember my size or whether my size matters. I want others to know me for my personality, for who I authentically am and what I stand for. I want people to remember me for being the woman I am. My name is Fiona Tan and I'm a beauty, wellness entrepreneur and a body positivity advocate. I was that girl who was told by boys, you know, you have a pretty face. Why don't you lose some weight and we can date? Why can't I get guys who will just love me for my curves? I was that girl who was told by teachers I could be so much more, but only if I lose some weight. And I could only attend leadership camp if I passed that special fitness test just because I was not the same size as the others. I was that girl who was told by my parents that I would never be hired or be able to get a professional job because I would be deemed as lazy and had to go through lots of physical punishment from home just because I didn't do the minimal exercise of being on the treadmill one hour a day. That was my childhood. As a grown woman today, I believe that my parents did that out of love and they had my best interests at heart. But it also took me a long time to overcome just stepping into a gym. Yes, those were some of my experiences growing up and there were more challenging ones. Sounds like life was tough, right? But I chose to tell myself, people are starving in the third world today. Some do not even have water. And people are also dying of diseases every day. If I think my life was tough, how about this? So I chose to think positive, to be the best authentic self that I can, to be the most hardworking person so that no one can ever tell me that they can't hire me because of my size. Those experiences shaped my life and made me who I am today. But telling yourself you always have to do better wasn't always smooth sailing or easy either. Telling myself I'm confident and no one can tear me down wasn't as easy as when you said that if you're the only person against the world. Back then, I didn't have curvy friends who also love fashion like I do, who also love themselves growing up. So I didn't really have that role model to look up to or turn to. And then there came a time I fell into the trap of society standards and norms. It's like I was being discriminated just because I was a different size. I had to go through a journey of finding myself again and I paid a high price for it. I succumbed and abused my body. I chose to go under the knife. No offense to those who choose surgery, but I felt it took a toll on my body. I did a full li body liposuction procedure in Thailand before I turned 21. And because I was at that point where I didn't want to fight against the tide anymore, I was tired of being told what size I should be. You see, I come from a family of friendly giants. Maternally, my family was on the chubbier side. Paternally, my family was mostly tall. So when you put two and two together, 
we're kind of like the friendly giant family, right? After the surgery, it took me almost half a year just to recover. Working out daily, eating like a celebrity with like we close to nothing in each meal. But I felt that I lost the biggest part of myself. And I was really young, not knowing who I could turn to. Then a realization struck me. I recalled something that happened a year before my surgery. Just before I crossed a very busy cross junction in Melbourne City, where I tripped and fell, no one came to help. Then after, a year after my surgery, I tripped again and almost fell at the same spot. Okay? Three, three guys just jumped at the opportunity to help me. Yes, I had more attention, but deep down, I wasn't happy. I felt like I had to lose this part of myself, so much of myself, so that I can learn who I want to be. I had suffered from substantial muscle loss, not being able to even wear high heels then for years. And I really love fashion, right? So how can I not wear high heels, right? So three years later, I found myself back to a size UK 20. And that is a 4XL in Singapore. But what I found my chirpy is that I found my chirpy personality back to self again. I learned to love myself and I kept thinking, how can I empower other girls who felt lost about their body as well? That they are not alone. Statistics show that approximately 91% of women are not happy with their body. And 5%, only 5% are women who are naturally born with that desired body that's being portrayed by media. And who's to say that is the perfect size, right? Then came an opportunity. I was invited to represent my country in the beauty pageant for plus size women. I immediately said, why not? Right? If I can even get onto a platform to spread body positivity and even just one woman can hear my story, wouldn't it be one step closer to what I would like to achieve? Little did I know that my efforts for my cause was not only seen but also heard. I was the only Asian lady competing in an international platform in Latvia, Europe with many other beautiful European women and I brought the crown home. This was really a big step to body positivity and a bigger step for awareness in Asia. I had to go through a journey of resilience to learn how to own my body because no one else can love it like you can. And today, I stand proud in front of the world as the reigning winner of the plus size beauty pageant. I'm now a world-class beauty queen. I've done it. We've done it, featured on all press and media across the globe. I'm currently loving my body more each and every day. And I stay healthy with great nutrition and exercise. And I've overcome my fear of going to the gym. You can still see that um, being healthy is nothing to do with your size. Being beautiful is nothing to do with any size. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that never give up loving your body and you should never have to give a piece of yourself away, just like I did. Just because we are not the same as everyone else. Because we don't fit the expectations of society. There's no such thing as a perfect size. No matter the size, you got to own that body. Because that body will carry you till the end of time. That body will react to how you feel about yourself. That body is your temple. You have to own your body. So remember to embrace your size, your curves, or even in the areas that are not. Praise your body. Love it because you get only one. Love your imperfections. Love that cellulite. Love the scars, the birthmarks. And it's 
are those are the things that make you you. I'm Fiona Tan, Miss Top of the World 2016, and I would like to remind you to love your body regardless of size. Thank you.